everyone and welcome to the first of the Warhammer Total War replay things, or these for multiplayer ones. Yep, we're in the Warhammer section once more, we've just done the Norska Life Battle, so now we're looking at some replays of multiplayer battles and seeing what was interesting, what could be done better and so on and so forth. So this was actually my first ever game of multiplayer. And I know what that implies, but hey, stick around, there's still more to this. So this was my first game, I chose as my faction to be Bordolo, and I was fighting off the Dwarves. And the Dwarves, being the Dwarves, have brought a relatively defensive army. And I was being Bordolo, and I was trying to experiment with these factions. I've never been too good with the Bretonian factions, but... Here I decided that maybe using foot squires would be a good idea. So let's go through the builds, but we'll just put this in slow motion so my men can start having a shifty about. So as you can see, my front line is mainly made up of foot squires. I brought four of them, since their armor-piercing attack should be a good counter for the dwarves, since dwarf u dwarven units tend to be very heavily armored and also generally resistant to magic. So you need armor-piercing units to deal with dwarves, as far as I've learned in this game. Commanding my army was Albrecht de Baudelieu. He was a uh, just not on his any mount. He was just in a regular sword infantry, just to provide general support to my uh, infantry. Then behind him, I've got three units of peasant bowmen, all armed with pox arrows, just to give some nasty status decreasing effects to the enemy. Make sure they're weakened, and then that should make life easier for my foot squires. Bring it up to the flanks here. I have two units of questing knights. Designed to kill off infantry. No need for anti-large when fighting the dwarves. Anti-infantry is the order of the day. And there's also two more questing knights on the other flank. And then bringing up the rear is my centerpiece or my best thing. Some Pegasus knights. Beautiful flying beasts. Very, very mobile. Very, very heavy hitters as well. So as you can see, I've brought a strong anti-infantry build here. Which should be a perfect counter for the dwarves. So while my men move in, let's have a look at what the dwarves have. First things first, they've done what might be Vanguard deployment or something like that, but they'd put one unit of qua well, not quarrelers, sorry, these are thunderers. Thunderer riflemen, quite far out. Um, I think he'd used them to start bringing my guys down, but what he decides to do is he, he was just retreating them instantly towards his main line. At the very front of his army, he has the Norgrimling Ironbreakers. Extremely tough Ironbreakers, these guys. Basically, does, basically, they can kill anything that comes near them. Very, very tough units. Then right behind him, we've got some regular little miners, but these ones are armed with the blasting charges, designed to blow up anything that comes near them. And then the grumbling longbeards on their flank. Very, very old dwarven warriors. Very, very good on the defensive and the offensive. Some more blasting charge miners on the other flank. And over here as well, more, even more regiments of renown, if you could believe it. The Warriors of Dragonfire Pass, and with flaming attacks, very, very nasty against regenerating units. Luckily, I hadn't brought any of those. By the way, he had a Rune Lord commanding him. This isn't Ungrim today. It's just a regular old Rune Lord, but he still gets his magic table. And with his magic runes designed to inflict some nasty spells against me. More, even more blasting charge miners here. Or at least these ones were also the Ekrund miners, so they were a regiment of renown. I think these guys are just armed heavier than regular miners. Still pretty tough to deal with, though. Even miners are still a very tough unit. Even more thunderers at the back to provide general support. Another unit of thunderers here. More thunderers. Unit of Ulfar's raiders as well. These are great weapon ra rangers. Stealthy. Sort of fast. They're okay units, I guess. I, I don't really play dwarves a lot. Regular miners here are equi equipped with blasting charges, but still all the more. Extra support, extra bodies to throw into the battle. Then at the back, two units of Thunderers, like we said, and also the Dragon Black Slayers, which are pretty lethal to Bretonian cavalry. These guys not only are good against taking out large units and have very, very high morale, they can actually slow down any unit they engage, which makes it harder for units to make their getaway. Perfect counter to the Pegasus Knights, then, you would think. Anyway, let's speed this one up, because my men are now on their way, and we've had a quick look at the, at the rosters. So... As you can see, it's very clear who's going to be taking a defensive and who's going on the offensive. My units are just spreading out across the map, getting ready to get around the flanks, try and surround the dwarves, and basically try and force their morale to go down. But then again, dwarven units tend to have very high leadership anyway, so routing isn't really something you tend to see out of the dwarves. A lot of them will just fight it out till the end. But either way, it was my first multiplayer battle and I wasn't really planning to lose it anytime soon. I did want to try and have a, my first game to be a victory. So I've got my questing knights already making their way around the flank, getting ready to do something. 
Moving in, and I decided to give these guys the order to take out those Thunderers who were just who were just trying to make their way back. I saw them as an easy target, hoping that the enemy hadn't noticed that he'd that I had my questing knights closing in on them. Questing knights were just trying to get themselves organised. Dwarves right now are just chanting, getting ready to, for the fight as well. If you want to make up a story for this battle, then feel free. Because as far as I know, Bordelow and Dwarves tend to get along. I mean, alright, Dwarves tend to be fucking gits. Who um, put everything, like every small transgression in their stupid book of grudges, but yeah. All my men were also chanting for the lady as my foot squires were making their way forward. At least they were beginning to fall behind. I brought my archers up first once they start popping in those lovely pox hours to start slowing them down. And Albrecht himself was being quite bold, just advancing on his own. But, uh, I think that was probably suicidal on Albrecht's part. Pegasus Knights, as you can see as well, they're making their way in. Though I was just trying to slow them down. Had a feeling that Thunderers would really, really make their life hell. So I was just trying to skirt around with them. Questing Knights here, lining up, getting ready to do their thing. Enemy had positioned his, uh, had positioned the Ekrund Miners to face him, getting ready for the incoming cavalry charge. By the way, these guys have candles on their heads, isn't that cute? As you can see over here as well, Questing Knights making their way around the flank. I was thinking, oh yeah, this is smart. I'm basically getting this guy surrounded now. It's going to be in a nice big circle, ready for me to just basically move in and crush. Questing Knights and with their weird chest of drawers that they always keep on their backs. But I'm equipped with a, like a... A Bretonian Bible as well, isn't that isn't that nice as well? And yes, by the way, we must read this world of dwarves. Didn't want to charge them in just yet, though. Decided to keep moving around. Had a feeling that the best way of winning this battle would be to move everything in at once. For the enemy was beginning to advance. He was seeing that I was on my way, so he did need to begin adjusting his formation, making his way in. I think he was also aware that I put my archers at the front. So he wasn't exactly going to sit around and let my pox arrow peasants just start doing their thing. But did just loose off my first volley there. Began hitting all these lovely Norgreen Ironbreakers. Saw those guys as the biggest threat basically. So I thought these pox arrows, while they're probably not going to be taking many kills off the enemy. They are going to make them nice and weak. And a, and a more doable target for the foot squires. These guys probably still would beat the foot squires anyway. But... If they were weakened, I could come up with less casualties and perhaps push them into a rout if luck was on my side and if a lady was smiling. Over here, my questing knights are getting ready to move in. By the way, if you want contest for this battle, I didn't know he was using blasting charges because I don't fight the dwarves a lot. But here, I was about to find out the hard way, but luckily these guys managed to get their charge into the Ekron knights with... Well, the Ekron knights without much issue. Managed to bowl them across the battlefield. I also found some hidden units, but they were just the rangers having a quick sneak around. But as you can see now, the first few Thunderers were beginning to blast off and some blasting charges had gone off and there you go. Blasting charges are not exactly good news for Knights because as you can see, while they may not be getting many kills, it's already pegging away at the morale and usually morale does not is not the strong point of Britannia, which I've discovered quite a bit. Britannians tend to flee quite easily. But I'd engaged the uh, Warriors of Dragonfire Pass with the Foot Squires. They were winning slightly, so that was good for me. Pegasus Knights, I'd moved them in to start pet chipping away at the Thunderers. Thunderers weren't going to last too long. But another load of Blasting Charges here had pretty much put the end of the day at sight for these Questing Knights. Even if he was killing his own men, he was scaring these horses and these Bretonians to death. So they were just not going to stay in the battle for very long here today. Over here, the enemy was using his Rune Lord. He put the Wrath Rune of Wrath and Ruin, so just beginning to drain away the health of my horrible, well, my lovely Foot Squires, actually, but this Rune Lord just was not dying. More Blasted Chads were just coming in, dispersing my infantry, and he'd already pushed his morale down to the wavering point. Meanwhile, over here, Pegasus Knights, they went in for the Ekrund Miners. Ekrund Miners were still winning somehow, though. I'm not sure if they have an anti-large attack or something, but they were decided to take down my guys. Some of my questing knights had come back to the battle to uh, replenish, or at least, you know, re not retreat. Pox Arrow Archers were just doing everything they could. I had them targeting the regiments of Renown, most importantly. Started to take out the uh, Ulfaz Raiders. Not getting too many kills. These guys are slightly more vulnerable to, ar to archers since they're not wearing too much armor and they don't carry shields, but... They were still doing very, very strong, standing very, very defiant. Foot Squires over here. Let's just get rid of this UI, by the way, for some visuals. Uh, as you can see... They were taking on the, the old grumblers, having a good time of it, but at the same time, the old grumblers were having a very good time just chopping my foot squires into nice little pieces. 
evenly matched battle, I'd say, but it was pretty much going to his side. Another round of blasting charges as well if they came in. We're not doing me very well. Throwing axes as well coming from the uh, rangers. Starting to try and take out my men. What was the dragon fire pass for? They were going down at least. Over here, the Ekrem miners. They were surrounded and fighting to the last man. Nearly at the end of their rope, but then suddenly my Bretonian knights began to leg it. Or at least, I was having to move them around. Because, well, the Rune Lord, he'd seen my Pox Archers as a big threat. So Rune Lord decided, well, he may as well just take them on. Because Pox Archers, or Archers in general for Bretonia, do not have morale. They just will retreat at the first sign of trouble. And then, these guys routing just resulted in everyone else routing. Did not work out in a victory there for me. And that's the thing with Bretonia I've seen in some battles. Um, when morale starts to go down, it will just cascade into a mass route very quickly. The same seems to apply for Chaos Warriors as well. But either way, I had a good battle with this guy. It was my first ever battle, so I was just basically show I'm basically showing this off for showing off reasons. Not the best thing, but it was still a close defeat. Uh, stats at the end of the day, yeah. Losses were more or less even. Um, I mean, yeah, I am pushing that a bit. And by the way, Albrecht was not very useful in this battle. As you can see, he only got, like, one kill. Um, but at the end of the day, I'd lost a lot of men. My questing knights had done okay. Foot squires were holding my best unit. I mean, a lot of his units actually didn't do too much. I mean, while the, while the Blasting Charge Miners were getting kills, what they were doing is they were just absolutely whomping down the morale of my men with their Blasting Charges. The Ekrund Miners as well, which are over here. They did okay. But all these regiments are renowned here, as you can see. They were doing a lot of kills. Thunderers as well. Just loud guns. Just, yeah, scaring off my horses. The dwarves just had the, had the advantage of me this time around. Still, fun battle. And the next one will be, well, it will be my second multiplayer battle. But there's also quite a few interesting ones along the way. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And next up, another battle. Have a lovely day, folks.